I have been playing this bad boy here for about 17 years of my life. Yeah, I started since I was 4 years old. And I guess that's the result of growing up in an Asian household, right? But all throughout my life, I think I've had close to 10 teachers. And that's a lot, considering my friends at uni only had around like 2 to 4 teachers max. And for anyone that's watching, if you're young, I recommend that you stick with your piano teacher as long as you can. Because having 10 teachers since I was young, it just confused the fuck out of me. It's sort of like the fitness industry. When you're scrolling down TikTok and looking through like what exercise to do, how you should condi condition yourself, like what kind of supplements to take, like everyone's just got their own opinions. So you have no fucking idea what is right and what is wrong. But having 10 teachers allowed me to gain a wide range of perspective on piano technique and on how to play the piano fundamentally. So today I'm here to tell you what I've learned throughout the past 17 years of my life and I'll try to explain to the best of my ability what I think is correct piano technique. And there's no gatekeeping whatsoever because the reality is even if I tell you everything that I know and I want to tell you everything that I know down to the smallest detail as accurately as I can if you don't practice then this information I'm about to tell you is going to be completely useless. It's gonna be like that bench player that tells everyone that they're so good, has a very loud mouth during practice, but when it's actually game time and it's time to play, they have nothing to prove for it because they didn't put the practice hours in. You feel me? So go practice. <laughs> and for the love of God, I don't want this to turn into like a five tips on how to get better at the piano or like do this and you might impress your friends or some shit. <laughs> do you want to know what the truth is? Practice. So yeah, let's get started. First of all, I want to talk to you about this guy. This guy right here, his name is Frederick Chopin. 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 Honestly, I don't know how to say his name correctly. <laughs> I definitely know it's not Chopin. The reason why I want to talk to you about Chopin is because to me, he's the greatest composer for the piano that's ever lived in history. And no, no, it's not Liszt. There are those stories about how Liszt was an amazing pianist. He was such a good performer, like he had good showmanship. And whenever he just performed, he'll just kill. But the truth is, Chopin was actually a better pianist than Liszt. And that's because of his understanding of the hand. Now, the understanding of the hand is fundamentally very important when you first begin to play the piano. And this is very evident in Chopin's etudes, otherwise known as study pieces, like finger exercises. I mean, technically it's called an exercise, but it's not really because it's so complete as a composition. But anyway, they're very impressive pieces. And fucking hard to play. His understanding of the hand is also evident throughout the notes in his students' books. Because Chopin was a teacher as well, and he used to teach his own works to his own students. For the people who want to look more into this, check out Jean-Jacques Ingoldinger's book, because he writes about Chopin's teaching methods, his values, and personal accounts of his piano playing as experienced by the people around him. It also includes annotated scores of his students, so it's really interesting. So what is this concept that Chopin figured out and then perfected? Is the concept of what I call the natural hand position. It's funny because I have a lot of experience in teaching piano as well to little kids like from age like 5 to 12. And no matter what their background is, like whether they've had a previous teacher or it's their very first time touching the keyboard ever, they always do the same thing. They try to use their finger strength to play. I'll show you what I mean by that. Every kid I've ever taught just plays like that naturally. It just proves to me that the piano, like the keyboard, is not ergonomic to our hand. Like, our hand was not designed to play the piano. But this is what you should have as your number one priority. is to be using the weight of your arm instead of your fingers. So, how do we get that? This is how I teach my students. I hold their arm up like this. I tell them to fully relax in the shoulder, elbow, and wrist, even in the fingers. Just drop your hand naturally. So from here, down to your leg. Now freeze, 
and look at the way your hand is shaped. If your hand looks like this, you might have a disability. Your hand obviously looks like this, right? This is what we want to maintain when we play our first notes. So instead of using our fingers, we want to use the weight of your arm without any tension in the shoulders, in the elbow, and the wrist. Drop your hand on the keyboard like this. Did you notice how that made a sound? That is the exact way to play. And please don't overthink this. You don't have to force your hand to be like this. Your naturally occurring hand position is just this. So the thing that you should value the most is comfortability. Again, I'll show you the difference. The difference is and if you don't get this fundamentally down straight away and you have that tension in your hand when you move your fingers, you'll never be able to play Flight of the Bumblebee faster than a kid with cerebral palsy can. Another thing to keep in mind, which is very important, is something that every piano teacher I've ever had taught me. And undoubtedly, your own piano teacher would have taught you this as well. It's slow practice. And I can't emphasize this enough. It's the number one thing I tell all my students every single lesson every week. I, I basically you get paid to tell them to practice slowly. So, The reason why slow practice is so important is because you'll never get rid of that tension unless you practice one note at a time. If I was practicing B major scale for example, the faster I play the scale, the further it moves away from being considered as practice. I'll never be able to play a perfect B major scale if I practice like this. And I do not preach anything that I don't do myself, so this is how I actually practice. I hold down the note and make sure my hand is fully relaxed, so, that, so there's no fingers going up like this. If you do find your fingers moving up like this, that's okay, just hold the note just stay still and then relax. Drop the weight into the note. Flexible wrist. So from that angle, you shouldn't be able to tell which finger I'm using. And the last thing I want to talk about is if you have any scales that you're working on, arpeggios, any technical work, or any etches that you're working on. This tip really helped me, is practicing them both legato and staccato. Piano teachers in Korea, uh, I don't know about any other East Asian countries, but Korean piano teachers, they get you to practice legato, then staccato, then two dotted rhythms, where the front one is dotted, and then for the second one, the second note is dotted. I'll show you what I mean. Legato. Staccato. and uh, two dotted rhythms. So the first one goes like this. And the second one is. Now let me just tell you the two dotted ones at the end, they're just completely useless in my opinion. You can gain everything from just practicing legato and staccato, but slowly. When you're practicing legato, I want you to obviously play it legato, which means the notes are always held down until the next note is played, and then you come up. Focus on getting all the weight of your arm into that one note you're playing in the moment. Don't think about the previous note you played, don't think about the note you're playing after, just hold the note and make sure you're fully relaxed until you move on to the next one. From my experience, it's the only reliable method of calibrating whether you're using the finger strength or your weight. And make sure legato is always played heavy and forte. On the other hand, staccato should always be light and played soft. And the way I teach it, you never have your thumb up and play. You always start on the note and come up. Now all these different points I was talking about from maintaining natural hand position and using the weight of your arm instead of the strength of your fingers and legato and staccato, all of this applies to anything that I practice, especially my pieces. Because when you practice concertos or like Chopin etudes, it gets technically very difficult. And the only way to do it is by maintaining your natural hand position.
I'll quickly demonstrate on how I would practice Chopin's Opus 10 number 1. Okay, I think that's about it for now. If you have any questions, just put it in the comment and I'll try to answer them as much as I can. I have a performance coming up in two weeks and I think I'll be vlogging next week. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully I can show you guys how I practice and what sort of preparation it goes in for a concert. Okay, thank you for watching, like and subscribe and follow my socials.